All right, back uh, after trashing Moosehead for being in on that little <laughs> poor commie Moose, scheme. Poor Moosehead, they tried to give you free stuff one time, and now you're dragging them through the mud. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't take it. Now I feel dirty after that. I'm gonna took it. Okay, then this is Moosehead's actually, in a way, kind of their flagship beer. This is the beer that started it all for Moosehead, although. Uh, it's kind of rare to get outside New Brunswick. I guess there might be a couple places in Nova Scotia you can find it, but it's like on the really hard to get. Or something. No, some guy said there was uh, sure. maybe in like there's like a Moosehead Cold Beer store or something in Dartmouth or I don't know. Uh, yeah. Maybe well, stuff in the city. So this is Moosehead Pale Ale. It was launched in 1931. Five percent alcohol by volume. Older and than, apparently it's American Pale Ale in style. Older than Alpine and stuff. Yeah. Can you give any little story on the bar? I guess the cans are the ones that give the big story. Yeah. What percentage is this? Five? Yeah. Should be. And uh, this is sent again by uh, Maxwell Starr. Uh, big thanks to him because we've been wanting to try this one for a while. And we haven't been able to get it. So. Awesome. This is pretty cool. I don't want this, do you? I'll just take all this. Shut, shut up. Wow, that is <laughs> mm, that's uh, pretty light looking. Yeah, I'm not thinking this. Mm -hmm. head on it. You know, it looks just like Moosehead Lager. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That is incredibly pale for an American pale ale. Usually, American pale ale has got to be at least it's kind of orangey or yeah, ambery. Kind yeah, of. that's that's lager looking like. Mm. Not much uh -oh. of a head. Uh oh. Turn into a IPA here or something. <laughs> yeah, you Alexander Keys IPA. All right, well, that's not much to look at, so we'll just go right to the smell, I guess. Well, it does smell different though. Mm. It smells dry. Kind of bready. Yeah, really very bready. That smells like one of the, what the hell is that beer we got from Albino Rhino that was like super bready like that? One of those dollar beers he sent. It was it a Nickelbrook one or something? Might have been one of the Nickelbrook ones. It was crazy, like just dry. Was that the malt, I guess? Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's That's kind a, of a bready malt. Surprisingly, actually a good smell. Yeah. <laughs> Little teeny bit of sweetness there, no hops. That I can really get. It smells alright though. Yeah, it smells okay. Nice and fresh smelling. Surprising though, I thought it was going to smell like forget. Mm, yeah. Like the old crappy beer. So I guess we'll go to the taste. Okay. Velvetly smooth. Yeah, pretty smooth. A little bit sweet. There's just lingering sweetness on the back of my tongue. Yeah. No real dryness. Mm. I mean, I can't detect any like. I don't know if I can like really point out any specific flavors. It's just got this like bready malt kind of thing going on. But the taste sort of just start to finish it's the same. It doesn't really yeah. change a whole lot. Kind of a it's very buttery smooth. Like it's just yeah. you know it drinks right nice. I think the do you get kind of like a minty hops taste in the back of your mouth from that? Yeah, there's a little bit of hot bite there. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's not the carbonation. No. Kind of, kind of, a, a little bit of a, yeah. kind of a minty hops bite yeah. in the end. That's good. It's good. It's very light bodied and everything. I wouldn't call it a, I don't know if I'd call it a pale ale really. It's kind of, it's more like, um, it's more like Mill Street Stock Ale kind of thing, you know, like really yeah. light and refreshing. Yeah, 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 that's what it reminds me of, sort of. It's, it's more on like that uh, style. So that you, organic lager they make, it's sort of like that. It's like really smooth, buttery, yeah. really smooth. Right down right now. Call it more of a, I wouldn't call it an American pale ale at all. I call it um, like a golden nail or, you yeah, know. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that was what pale ale was more like back in the 30s. You never know. Because mm. right? pale ale is kind of gone kind of, some pale ales are brutal hoppy and stuff yeah. now. But. I'd say it's more like a golden nail or I like that. Yeah. yeah, I like it. That's it's not a big complex beer or nothing. It's just you know easy yeah, drinking. Offensive. I can drink a whole bunch yeah. of these. Hmm. 
Actually, I think it's more than a moosehead lager. Right? Actually, yeah, I, I think because <laughs> a moosehead lager has that. After a while, it gets that that weird taste kind of builds up on you and makes you want to like. I don't know. It's I think the right. thing like um, the big plus for this beer is uh, a. It's there's no chance it's going to go skunky. Like if this was sent like. I've seen a lot of Americans who try Moosehead to go, ah, oh, skunky, because, you know, it's been shipped to America in it's green bottles. And, yeah. Um, here you got the brown bottle, so it's most likely never going to go skunky on you by the time you get it. Um, and it doesn't have, like, a lot of people I see, they object to that, like, uh, that peppery taste that yeah. the regular Moosehead locker has. This doesn't, doesn't have that, so. Hmm. I'm going to say, eh, I'm going to be a little generous and say three out of five. I like it. I'll give it three and a half. Three and a half, yeah. I like that. Wish we could get that here, actually. Mm. Buy that. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Moosehead uh, Pale Ale. I say three out of five. Scott says 3.5 out of five. It's kind of a surprise, though, really. Yeah. Think about it. Like I thought I wasn't expecting very much. Right on. See you guys later.